before we get into that, just for anyone who is completely unaware of what Anubis is, which I did find out is now the top search result on Google if you search Anubis GitHub above all of the other projects also named Anubis, so <laughs> we're getting somewhere. Um, but for anyone who is unaware of the project, uh, briefly explain what the project is. TLDR, it is the Cloudflare I'm under attack feature, but host self-hostable and on servers you can look at. Mm -hmm. And instead of a CAPTCHA, which, let's face it, I'm not smart enough to implement a proper CAPTCHA, uh -huh. and those are easy to game, and they pay humans to solve those, so and the, sol the CAPTCHA solving APIs are built into everything. It uses a proof-of-work scheme instead. Mm -hmm. And the proof-of-work is uh, a hack, but it works enough. I do oh, I'm not going to deny it's a hack. Like it, it seriously is a hack. Like mm -hmm. I do want to talk more oh, about that, but um, I guess let's just talk about first the sort of experience you've had with the, just out of nowhere this project becoming really popular. Because you're saying before it was January that you made the project, and shortly after that, like late mid to late January, you made the first post about it. Yeah. I, uh, let's, uh, looking at my blog's Git history, it was, uh, I posted something about Amazon's crawler. The, the TLDR is in January, Amazon's crawler took out my Git forge while I was trying to do something on it. Mm -hmm. And this is annoying. So I tried to fight it. I didn't have much success. I posted something on Hacker News about it. Mm -hmm. um, I tried a couple things that I'm not going to admit on a recorded uh, recording, but they didn't work. Um, and I I got inspired by something I kind of remembered reading about email spam called Hashcash, mm. where ah, it used a proof okay, of work yeah. scheme in order to protect uh, upstream resources. And somehow I got on the Wikipedia page for weighing of souls, and I figured, huh, Anubis would be a good metaphor. Mm -hmm. So that's how that started. <laughs> so I'm not kidding. I just randomly found myself on that Wikipedia page. Sometimes you gotta like, you just gotta let the vibes take you places. Sure, sure. Why not? Um. So the first place that I am aware of that deployed Anubis, at least the first notable place, uh, was the GNOME GitLab. Was there something before that that I'm unaware of? Because that's certainly where most people first heard about it. If there is another place that it has it, I have not heard of it. I The first notable one is the GNOME GitLab, and from what I've learned talking with the sysadmin team, it was a Hail Mary. Mm -hmm. Right. It's like, nothing else worked. What could we lose? So you've had and discussions then their uh, oh, sorry, go on. GitLab pod instantly scaled down to three from six. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So you've had discussions since then. Um, were the discussions like did did anyone like reach out to you before you, they deployed it? Because like the documentation, you know, it, it's it's a very new project. There's, it's been even just since I put up a video, I've noticed a bunch of stuff has been added. So I'm not sure what the state of the documentation was uh, like a month or so ago when uh, it was deployed. Um, when the first instance of it was deployed, the documentation was a single readme file that had a bunch of aspirations. Uh, this is how I got this working on my machines and other thoughts about how things could be implemented. Mm -hmm. And apparently the Kubernetes example was good enough for the GNOME sysadmin team to figure out. And Yeah. Okay. That's how it started. And it's mostly just been a continuous process of figuring out how bad I am at writing and then figuring out how to make it better. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. <laughs> so, no one, like, I mean, like, no one, me I, like, messaged you about, it, like, hey, is there anything that we're missing here? It was just like, are oh, they, they just worked it out themselves? Uh, there's a couple things. Like, <laughs> when big users get things set up, I just, like, I, find their IRC channels and then ask them like, hey, uh, I noticed you're using Anubis. Thanks. Uh, is there anything that sucked in the docs and I could make easier? Mm -hmm. And then I just take all that feedback and just fix it. Right, right. Fair enough, fair enough. Yeah, the Sourceware team has been very helpful for that. Mm -hmm. 
uh, Sourceware for context is the upstream organization for small projects like GCC. Ah, okay, yes. <laughs> very small projects. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, very small projects. <laughs> <laughs> what, what was the um? What was the the line from Linus Torvalds when he made the the kernel? Um, uh, it was something about like uh. Small. small it's not small and unprofessional. Let's, it was something let's, along uh, those oh, lines. His famous email. Um, I'm doing a free operating system, just a hobby. Won't be a big and yeah. professional like new. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. That's what I, that's what GCC is at this point. No one's ever heard of it. No one's ever used GCC. Yeah. So how does it playing into place now? Mm -hmm. <laughs> So the GNOME GitLab they put out, um, they they started using Anubis. It's got a bit of attention there. I, someone, I people like wrote blog posts about it, talked about it. They noticed there was an anime girl on there. Like, what's happening? Um, shortly after that, uh, a bunch of other places started deploying it, like very very quickly. It's only been a couple of weeks, uh, a couple of weeks since then. Yeah, I've been attempting to keep track in a documentation page mm -hmm. in the in the doc site. There's a message in the patron discord that I keep editing with all the different things, places that I'm aware of. Mm -hmm. um, I thought that I would be the only user of it ever. So I mostly like created it with that in mind and aimed at me and <clears throat> Now I'm at the point where I'm getting contributions from functionally random people and they're actually good. Mm -hmm, like, mm -hmm. this is a bar I never thought I would get. <laughs> so, let me just go to the. Uh, where is it? Is it under. That one? I have uh, four posts ah, in front of me. There uh, we go. Want me to link them to you? I know, I know, I found the, the thing. Um, okay. So, right now. Notable ones, obviously, it's on like random people's like Giddies and Git Labs as well. Um, we yeah. have the GNOME Git Lab here, uh, the Wine Bugzilla, the FreeBSD SVN, the Bug Tracker oh, for FFmpeg. Git is now using it. Oh, okay, cool. Um, Source Hut's using it, uh, Purism's uh, Git is using it, Enlightenment's Git is using it. Uh, the Arch Wiki is using it. Wait, <laughs> Devwin's gets using it as well. Okay, that one's a new one. Um, <laughs> yeah, Devwin was just added uh, earlier today. I got an email from the Devwin team saying, "Hey, thank you for setting. Thank you for making this." Mm -hmm. And I see and, they use the uh, uh, they use the regular uh, the regular Anime Girl branded version. I guess it's good enough for Devwin and not good enough for the Arch Wiki. <laughs> So, what's it like being in this position? I sh like, in my video, I showed the, you know, the, the XKCD on dependencies where it's like everything's held up by this random little pillar by just some random person in Nebraska. What is it like being the random pillar? <laughs> like, that's where you're starting to become now. <laughs> it is simultaneously hilarious, humbling, and... Oh, I need a third one because a triad is a nice pattern. Um, it's like hilarious, humbling, and I can't come up with a third one. It's it it's hilarious at some level. Like, yeah, yeah. I I've had a, I've been blogging for a couple years. I have like I need to do the numbers again, but it's somewhere between five hundred. 30 and 560 articles if you include all the stuff i've written for work wow okay that's um, actually, for people that blog usually they're like oh, i'm gonna write a couple of posts every like every couple of months that's actually impressive yeah. i am a professional writer at this point like mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that's basically what i do of uh, i have written like a terrifying number of things let me just look at the sidebar for the work blog and uh one yeah it's over like 50% of the things in the sidebar for the work blog. I need to make link posts for those. Oh my goodness, there's just so many. <laughs> oh, sorry, sorry, I thought there was something more you wanted to say about the, the blogging. Oh, it's... Honestly, having a blog and putting my opinions there has mm. been 
hands down the best thing I have ever done for my career. Uh Because if you have a certain level of notoriety and, you know, you have like enough articles over enough time to prove that you actually know what you're talking about, Mm. you don't have to do tech interviews. You don't have to do like those horrible whiteboard screening, leak code grinding interviews anymore. (laughs) So Cinemax as like a... It's basically a portfolio in a sense, just not a code portfolio. Yes, uh, I also have my GitHub as my code portfolio, mm. and one of the mo- one of the more recent uh, job interviews I've done has been uh, the interviewer noticed that I was very prominent. Like they searched their work Slack and fig- found out that I they linked something I wrote in their work Slack. They linked me the article and then just asked me to. Uh, uh, what I what I learned there and what I did and that was a really interesting discussion. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think which article was it? I think it was like oh, it was when I put my IRC client into Kubernetes. Uh, my IRC okay. <clears throat> uh, my IRC client runs with Kubernetes. That one, I assume it. Would yeah. Be it. Yep. Cool. Yep. Oh, that was such a blurred post. <laughs> Not blessed, not cursed, mm-hmm. but something else mm-hmm, blurred. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> so this this blogging experience you've had has been like a a good way to just, I guess, get your thoughts out on a lot of things. To it just, I guess, build up not just, not just show that you know something but when you put something out in a written form or a video form or just put it in a form where other people are going to consume it it does require you to actually think about what you know and try to structure it in a way that hopefully someone might understand it gives you a a deeper understanding when you're trying to have other people understand your thoughts 